if it is about international trade, if we are looking at international trade, what is it that we are hoping to sell as apparel businesses in Africa? Um, also, how do we then facilitate that? Which is our market? Are we looking for Europe? Are we looking for the US? Or are we looking regionally? Shall we try and build on the trading blocks that already exist in Africa? Um, and I think I'd like Linda to maybe comment on that because you have a bit of you have a bit of experience. My Okay, I don't know about the experience, but I know I got put on a podium talking about trade in Africa. Um, well, there's just a couple of things, even as I get into that, that I would like to re-challenge, you know, Anne and Kimathi, um, just on the thinking of, okay, so we want to attract, you know, to be more international, to be more global. Um, I think it's, you know, if you're going to sell your brand, you, you know, start at home. You know, you have, to, you have to have the local people understand who your brand is. It's that whole local market and then you can actually brand it, you know, internationally, the whole global market. Because once you have an understanding here, you have a backing and a following and you have, um, you know, a celebrity for that matter. Jay-Z, yes, is a celebrity out there, which is why we have yo-yo-yos in our industry who want to be just like him. But we're losing our cultural, you know, background and our stability and what is great and good about Africa and in promoting Africa. It's, what, what I'm finding has changed massively, hugely in the last 12 months. And suddenly, um, Africa is really on the map for the large retailers place where there is the raw material that's all here, um, but our challenge is actually to get the production, to get the manufacturing to, to match that, plus I think infrastructure and logistics, which is another issue. Um, so there seems to be an, an issue of getting some private investment as well as some real, real well thought out industrial policy from the government on that. Um, but there is there is such potential, I really do feel it. Um, and I think one of the things that we discussed as well is that the production units here tend to really... But someone said, how do people know about them? And I would say one of the major advantages of young designers starting is you're very flexible, you can have a great idea, you just make it and you do it. With ourselves, we have people employed in a workshop, we subcontract factories, we have a shop, we have like a lot of overheads and things that we really, we can't, we don't have the same flexibility to just wake up in the morning and say, hey, let's do this funky thing. We, it's a different way of working, so there's actually opportunities for both. I mean, it's just to build on what April was saying. Um, I think marketing is a big thing about it. And I think one of the biggest things to say about that is branding. I mean, we, we can talk about Louis Vuitton all day, but you know, Louis Vuitton is, is a dynasty sense. They don't, they don't just become an influencer because, you know, of, or they take the Maasai cloth and it becomes hot just because Louis Vuitton did it. It's because the people who follow Louis Vuitton for all these years believe in them. Whatever Louis Vuitton says becomes hot instantly because they've built a brand, they've told a story. I think African designers and whoever is trying to get into the business has to understand that it's a story. How do you tell that story and be authentic to it? So whatever you have in your collection, it's not just a piece of cloth walking down the, the runway. It has to have essence of it that moves beyond that piece of cloth. That's people, you know, like when I'm wearing your clothing line, I can live your lifestyle. You live it, you dream it, you die for it every day. That's what you're selling to people. I think that's, that's what we need also as African designers to understand that you have to shoot it from the images, the way you present yourself, the way your brand is seen, you know, where your logo is seen, what you interact with, it has to all be consistent. I, I think that's a really good point. Um, I think as we heard earlier today, manufacturing in Africa is really not clear from Kenya to Tanzania. We, can. we have our um, labels and accessories stuck in customs for four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks. Now, when you're trying to compete in a market which fashion is, is fast, has been fast, that's, that's going to kill you, it's going to completely kill you. So there are big challenges. Um, we're not on an even footing with the global 
uh, apparel manufacturing hubs of the world. So where are we going to find our value addition? And I think to build a brand, to really believe in it, to uh, something that, that people will connect with, well, there's some value there. Um, if you're if you're going to make something of an absolutely fantastic quality, it has to it has to look good, it has to feel good, it has to be relevant, it has to be appropriate. That's when you're you're selling value. Because what, if we went out as um, as apparel businesses, purely selling on price, you know, we're, we're dead before we start because there's no way that you can compete in the global market on price alone. I think we've had that view echoed in the, in the previous panels as well. Um, so I mean, just one statistic that, that hits hits me very uh, hard is that today Sub-Saharan Africa um, actually accounts for less than 1% of the global trade of garment manufacture. Less than 1%. So when you look at that and you look at how much cotton and how much raw material and how much actually unemployed people there are, um, the garment sector has traditionally been the engine of growth, the very first engine of growth. That's how every major economy from the UK to Japan has developed looking at garments because it's a low to low entry model and it provides employment opportunities. So for me it's very clear that Sub-Saharan Africa really needs to um, make the most of that and harness the opportunity of garment production and we need to get over the barriers, be they government, be they logistics, be they a lack of communication and information. We need to work together to see how that can best be overcome because I believe that if we move from an island mentality where everyone's doing something separately and we move to a cluster, so as you have in Turkey or as you have in India or Bangladesh, you have clusters of manufacturing, actually everybody benefits and everything develops. Um, so before we go to questions from the audience, I just wanted to ask if there are any other points on that that you feel you've not to express Sorry. All right, so I, I just wanted to add on to what um, Kimathi was saying. Um, when it comes to just branding and marketing and having um, a really good platform, I guess one of the things um, that is really lacking is um, financing. And financing being the fact that you have to have proper samples made, you have to know the manufacturers that you're working with, and all of it takes money. It just doesn't take, you know, Jogona from down the road to help, you know, make like five different samples, and then I'm just keeping it real, you know, and then saying that this is, you know, this is what my samples are, because understanding what needs to happen especially when it comes to financing a brand because you're no longer just Kimathi you become Jamuhuri wear and financing Jamuhuri wear takes a lot of money so maybe in essence and I'm always throwing out the challenges is to maybe work um, approach a bank that would um, support the fashion industry be it equity be it standard chartered be it I don't know, Barclays back to actually say we're coming in as an association, we want to work with certain manufacturers, and this is what it takes, this is what the turnover is going to be, and just having dialogue with them. So starting with the finances in order to get to build the brands. Thank you. So I think we're kind of running out of time, so we're going to go to Q&A, but unless Anne, you can be very, very quick with your point. As Fat on my other hand, we have been discussing with one of the banks to do that and to do incubation centers for young designers where they can rent fully kitted spaces. Um, but you do have to remember also interest rates here, 24%. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Thank you. Um, some really fantastic dialogue and discussion there.